What's going on guys and welcome back. By now most of you have probably seen the 2025 player sleds that came out and kind of understand what came out. For the most part in the trail segment we have the biggest, the big topics are the 9R in a trail sled which is awesome. Again we've had one for the last two years. We actually have two this year uh, and the dynamics suspension in uh, the VR1 platform. So that's 650, 850 or VR1 boost. <clears throat> which that is the topic of this com uh, video, not com well, conversation, but also video. It is, in my eyes, a ginormous leap in the right direction. And I think this is the future of kind of all things. Um, you know, there are other manufacturers that kind of set the tone, but Polaris and Fox got together and really came up with an incredible, incredible, incredible uh, platform. And it's kind of technology that's <clears throat> over my head, but I'm trying to understand it. And uh, luckily I have my film crew, as some may call it, down at the Polaris release, and they were able to get together, uh, get some videos, and that is Bruce Gaspardi from Southside Sales and Service, and Will from Velocity Sled Performance. Uh, you know that those two guys are in my corner 100% uh, of the time. So they were actually able to link up and get some videos done, and then they got some engineers involved to kind of explain what the system does. but. From my understanding of it, it is an unbelievable system and I'm really excited to uh, try it next year. Uh, from the people that have ridden it that I know said it's, it is really, uh, uh, I don't want to say dynamite because that's close to dynamics, but uh, it's a, just an incredible system and the, just the thought process behind it. And we could potentially go into even more depth of what and exactly how this dynamics works and ins and outs of it. But this video should kind of give you a lot of info and kind of understanding of how it works. But again, thanks to my film crew for uh, sending these over to me. So uh, enjoy and I'll close the video out after these, uh, my film crew's video. And before I go to their clips, uh, obviously it's in a big convention, so it's very loud in the background. So I apologize if the video or the sound is not great. I did my best in editing them to try and kind of get the background noise out. But uh, again, you guys will get the point. Hey Bruce, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Well, not too bad, not too bad. Good to be out here this year at you at the show. Yeah, yeah. Some pretty cool stuff they came out with. So like uh, boost wise VR1 and regular VR1, we got we finally got a Dynamix suspension setup. So obviously we go into the suspension stuff all the time. Well now we have something that does it by itself. So um, we know there's other stuff out there like that, but with Fox doing it, one difference is is they're doing all four shocks is all controlled with three different levels of ride, which is a big deal compared to some of the other ones are only covering three shocks and missing that center shot. So with that being said, the, it's controlling all four shocks and they they had a they got a pretty cool uh, deal over here when you hit the throttle, it's showing you where it stiffens the rear shock so that it doesn't wheelie, and then when you get on the brakes, it stiffens the front shock so it doesn't dive. And uh, I talked to Levi. Levi had been uh, running it, and he he said it was the most awesome thing out of a box that he had ridden. So I usually I take a lot from him because he obviously rides everything. But um, I did talk to Fox about it and what they're doing. And uh, as far as the all the shocks are two inch diameter, so usually a VR1 has been inch and three quarter on all our stuff. I'm sure you guys have been paying attention to when we talk about this stuff. But an XER is usually the one, XER or Assault is usually the two inch front. And then they have the two inch front track, and then the other stuff had inch and three quarter rear. Now this one is two inch front to back, so it is a big deal. Two inch shocks make a big difference in, in how it controls the oil because the pistons are bigger, the valves are bigger. So, and now obviously it's doing it by itself. So they're, they're doing it with. Um, you know, same style torsion springs we've had before, but it is a new torsion spring. Has a little less preload to it because now the shock can make up for things. So now they don't need to hold the sled up so much with the rear spring. Um, if you're a heavier guy, you're probably, yeah, you may still have to change that rear torsion spring. But in general, uh, they've really dialed this with, with the spring that's on there. And then the front track spring is a new spring. Again, we always talk about springs. The uh, I'm usually changing because the one that's in there is too soft. This one now is kind of an in the middle deal, so I'm kind of excited about that new new spring on the front track shock that'll 
it you know they really feel that it's a good anti-bottoming spring and then again that shock is controlled so that it will help anti-bottom anyway yeah for sure okay so we, we talked a little bit about how it actually translates from front to rear um, because it has a gyro in it so that the, the machine can pick up that inertia when it's hit the throttles hit and it you know it leans back how much it's going to lean back when you hit the brake how much it's going to lean forward uh, the cornering when it picks up the pressure on the outside so that it keeps the sled level um, from the outside to inside so it's a you know it's a really really well thought out process for that and then you have right here on your dash as soon as you as soon as you hit this we'll show you on a gauge after that's actually lit but you have that comfort rally and extreme and those those different levels of from zero to anti-bottoming you know is a is a broad range it's just a matter of when you go to rally that comfort is now higher and then still anti-bottoming and then when you're extreme everything is on the stiffer side all the time so it's um it's just a quick hit the button flashes up on the screen click it another time where you want to move it and it's doing it yeah and like bruce mentioned we're going to show you guys that uh coming up here on a live screen uh this screen here is not live one other thing bruce you mentioned it earlier on it's a gyrometer based um for acceleration and the compression stiffness increase in the rear shock is directly related to how hard we're accelerating yeah. um this system is very intelligent um to when it comes to studs you want to explain a bit when you start adding traction to the sled how it automatically adapts sure yeah because um, you know on a sled that's a normal 135 track which is our nice common covert track i don't know how many of you guys are stud guys how many of you guys aren't stud but if you've ridden one and then ridden the other it's a huge change from the point of acceleration especially now with all the power we got whether it be non-boost or boost um so now with this being picking up that that inertia it's going to change considerably with traction compared to not having traction and spin out it's going to it's going to re-level that playing field as far as how much inertia is actually getting done for traction yeah for sure so i think that's uh that sums it up pretty good right there for now hello austin howdy it's good to meet you here at the players uh snow show um how are we uh, looking with this sled here with the new dynamic suspension? Can you give me a good quick overview? Yeah, so this is the new model year 25 Dynamics VR1. What makes this sled uh, pretty unique is actually under the hood here we have a suspension control module. That's where our IMU comes in. Our IMU is our inertial measurement unit. And that essentially is a gyroscope and accelerometers together. So it's measuring the acceleration and the pitch, roll, and yaw of the vehicle instantaneously so while you're driving the sled it's dynamically changing all the four shocks your ifs front track shock and rear track shock for different events so while you're driving down the trail you go around a corner the imu is going to rec recognize lateral acceleration stiffening up your outside shock creating the best turning performance of the vehicle similar you got accelerating and braking event on accelerating event it adds compression damping to the rear track shock to keep the vehicle level and then on braking event it'll actually add compression damping to the IFS so that you can maximize your braking potential. There is also airborne event so while the sled goes in the air all, all four shocks will go stiff so it'll soften up the landing so you can hit whatever you want. So this is our Dynamic 7S screen here. Um, you'll be able to switch your modes right here. You hit it once, it'll pop up with the sidebar, and then you'll hit it again to be able to change through your modes. Comfort mode, very self-explanatory. It's your most plush comfort ride that you're gonna have. Rally mode is where we build all of our really good cornering, uh, really tight trail technical riding. And then your extreme mode is for you guys that wanna just bomb down the ditch and hit some crossings. Quick question there, Austin. Yes. Um, if one is riding the sled down the trail, they're riding in comfort mode, they're coming up to a situation where they come over a hill they see a G out, is there a real pinch and hurry to get it into the rally or extreme mode, or will the suspension have the ability to 
adapt to the yep. situation? Very great, great question. You can actually set it and forget it. Put it in whatever mode you want to. And while the sled goes into your big dip for your big G out event like you're talking about, the IMU is going to recognize that, that uh, acceleration and it's going to start stiffing up all your shocks as you go through that G out event. So you won't get those spine tinglers. Okay, that is great information. Appreciate that. Alrighty, so if I'm looking down in here, Austin, we can see there's a bunch of new components. Can you give us a quick overview of yep. uh, what we have going on so here? So what's new to Dynamics is we have a new front track shock spring. It's actually an 83-185 with more focus on the higher rate spring so you won't come crashing through like on our previous VR1. We also do have stiffer torsion springs. These are 13 pound, 90 degree torsion springs. So traditionally the uh, VR1 came with 11 pound torsion springs. Correct. Um, and a much different center shock. The new torsion spring, is that specific to the VR1 dynamic or is that on the VR1s without dynamic suspension as well? It is specific to dynamics. Okay, leading into the next question I have for you here today, Austin. Um, cargo, we have a, a bag on the back of this sled. We know if you start adding oil inside your bag or adding gear, it can really change the weight to the rear of the sled. Um, could you go over how the suspension will make compensations, what it will adjust by itself and what it won't adjust? Yep, so first off, you always wanna adjust your towards the spring box for the appropriate weight of what you are um, but what's cool about dynamics is that with the added weight on the vehicle you don't have to do any valving on your shock the IMU is going to recognize with acceleration that there is more mass on the vehicle and it will add more compression damping thank you Alrighty, I got Austin here from Polaris and uh, question was how are we going to take the skid out with a new dynamic suspension Yep, good question. So super easy, there's a connector right here for the harness in the skid. The great, great connector yep. right there. Yep, that guy right there. You'll unplug that, there's some torques right here. You'll pop those off, kind of feed the harness through, and then it's just like your normal skid. You'll take out the four bolts and the skid will come out with the harness. Super easy to service. So realistically, maybe an extra two minutes? Maybe. And pulling a skid tops? Yep. So very very well thought out system as far as serviceability goes so again guys it really is an unbelievable system and it is there's a lot of technology that goes into it um again i think in a later video we might do like a very very in-depth one uh will really sat with the guys bruce talked to the guys at fox so we have a ton of information um that if you guys were interested in kind of knowing we could do all that but Again, just buy this video. It is really top of the line, really awesome. I'm excited to get on it next year. And uh, again, coming as you know, the, the YouTube uh, suspension uh, <clears throat> channel, I mean, it's really, it's really something cool for us to be like, wow, look at that. And again, I'm not taking anything away from the 9R because that is super impressive. Um, but this is kind of really piquing our interest, I guess probably because we have already had the 9R in the trail sled. Uh, which is awesome. Um, so we're going to see, and I've already got questions about, you know, can we put this in a 9R and so on and so forth. And uh, we're figuring that all out and <clears throat> hopefully have an answer for you guys soon. But pretty much that is it for now, guys. Uh, again, thanks to uh, my team, aka film crew, for uh, <clears throat> documenting all the uh, ins and outs and, you know, sending them over to me so I could put this video together for you guys. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it, so uh, they were uh, gracious enough, as always, to to get some f footage for me so I could give it to you guys. But anyway, that is going to do it. Uh, let me know what you guys think of, think of Dynamics down in the comments below. Um, I'm sure there's probably mixed emotions because it's something new and it's scary and it's you know, electronic and so on and so forth, but I'm super pumped for it. I think it's, a, again, a giant step in the right direction. And uh, I'm excited to get my hands on it and try it. So, but that's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.